So just don't get caught up in the grammar. I'm gonna share with you just a few ways that I increase my vocabulary. Kind of just gives you a really nice reference and you would never dream about learning a language this way and that's totally fine. But it worked for me, so I'm sure it can work for you too. Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah, an expat living in Croatia. In some of our videos to date, I've spoken a bit of Croatian. And so many of you have wondered, how did I learn Croatian? Do I have Croatian roots? Um, basically, how did I get to the point that I am? I think that you have the strength of the foreign language. Oh, no. Like Croatian is my mother language, right? Tira, how long do you need? Do you need half an hour? So first off, I have zero Croatian roots. I learned Croatian from scratch. Um, the first time I even heard the language was when I stepped off the plane in Zagreb when I visited the first time. So in this video, I'm going to share the steps that I took to get to a really comfortable conversational level. Um, I'm sure many language teachers would strongly disagree with my method, uh, but it worked for me, so I'm sure it can work for you too. And I'm sure it can work for other languages as well. And I think it's the most practical way to getting you speaking Croatian. So in these steps, I'm gonna quickly run through the Croatian alphabet. I'm gonna walk you through some really uncomplicated grammar that you're gonna to need to get by in the beginning. And I'm going to share a few tips and tricks that really help me grow my vocabulary. But I'm telling you right now, you're gonna to have to throw all the complicated grammar and cases out the window just for now. Now is the time to focus on getting conversational, however imperfectly that may be. It really doesn't matter. I promise all Croatians are so kind when they hear you speaking their language. Um, not once have I had someone judge me because I used a wrong case or I used a masculine adjective with a feminine noun. Um, all Croatians are pretty much thrilled that you're learning their language and they're very supportive and they don't care whether you have 100 mistakes or not. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a Croatian language teacher. Um, I'm just showing you the tips and tricks that I used in order to learn the language and um, maybe you'll find them useful too. Okay, so here we go. Uh, the steps I took to learn conversational Croatian. The first step is to learn the alphabet. Very basic, uh, but you have to know how to pronounce each letter so that you can read words, you can pronounce words, um, and you can learn words. So the alphabet is brojeden, number one. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through the alphabet and I'm going to compare the English versus the Croatian letters. So a lot of them are the same, just a few are different, you can follow along. I've also made a sounds like row, just so you can see how the Croatian letters can be read phonetically in English to help with pronunciation. So A, there's no change, sounds like a short A sound, A. Ah. B, there's no change, it sounds like B. C is a little bit different, it sounds like TS, like the end in cats. So we'll just put that in, cats, C. Ch sounds like CH, another CH sounds like CH. The D is no change, sounds like D. J sounds like a hard J sound, jam. The other J also sounds like a hard J sound, like jam, J. E, there's not really much change. It's like a short E sound, like E, eh, elephant. F, there's no change, sounds like F. G, there's no change, sounds like G. H, there's no change, sounds like H. I, sounds like a double E sound, so a long E. E. J, actually sounds like Y, so Y. K, there's no change, sounds like K. L, there's no change, it sounds like L. And L sounds kind of like the middle of million, L, million. M, there's no change, sounds like M. N, there's no change, sounds like N. N, kind of sounds like the middle of onion, the N-I in onion, N. O is like a long O sound, O. P, there's no change, sounds like P. There's no Q. R is kind of the same, you just have to roll it, so R. S, there's no change, sounds like S. Sh, sounds like an SH sound, Sh. T, there's no change, sounds like T. U actually sounds like a double O sound, like the end of the word two, U. V, there's no change, sounds like V. There's no W, there's no X, there's no Y. The Z, there's no change, sounds like Z. And the Z kind of sounds like the S in measure. So measure or treasure, Z. And there is the creation alphabet and all of the sounds. 
So the next step is to learn the pronouns along with the verb biti, which is to be. Biti is a really important verb um, in any language because of course you use it to express yourself. Um, and also in Croatian, it's an integral part of learning past tense. But first, here are the pronouns and how to conjugate the verb biti, to be. So I is ja, sounds like ja. You is ti, sounds like ti. He is on sounds like on, she is ona, sounds like ona, it is ono, sounds like ono, you plural or like a polite form is vi, sounds like vi, we is mi, sounds like the word mi, they is oni and it sounds like oni. So now we're going to put together the subject pronouns with the verb to be, biti. So I am becomes ya sam, ya sam. You are becomes ti si, ti si. He is becomes on ye, on ye. She is becomes ona ye, ona ye. It is becomes ono ye, ono ye. We are becomes mi smo, mi small. You are plural becomes vi ste, vi ste. They are becomes oni su, oni su. So step three is learning how to conjugate regular verb forms. It's not too tricky. Um, of course there are many exceptions but don't focus on the exceptions right now. Just apply the general rule to all the verbs and everybody will understand you. You can even think about when kids are learning verbs and they say like, I go to the store. Obviously they wanna say I went to the store. I eated an apple instead of I ate an apple. People know what they're trying to say and that's the same thing if you're trying to speak and you mix up some kind of verb form. So just don't get caught up in the grammar. Just follow the basic rules um, and let yourself start speaking. Now I'm gonna walk you through a simple verb conjugation and a lot of verbs in creation and just like this with a T-I ending. Um, so all you have to do is take off the T-I and add the following endings. So we'll use the example imati, which is to have. So first we just take off the T-I and we add an M. Ya imam, I have. For T, you take off the T-I and you add sh. T imash, you have. So for on, you take off the T-I and you don't add anything. So just on ima, he has. Same thing with ona, take off the T-I and you don't add anything. Ona ima, she has. Same thing with it, ono ima. It has me, you take off the T-I, and you add an M-O, imamo, me imamo, we have. V, take off the T-I, and you add a T-E, imate, V imate, you have. Oni, take off the T-I, and you add J-U, imayu, oni imayu, they have. And that's how you do a simple verb conjugation in creation. Of course, there are many exceptions, but this is a basic rule that you can apply to most verbs and people will understand what you're saying. Here are just a few verbs that don't follow this pattern, but they're really common verbs and you just need to memorize them. So, voljeti, to love. Ja volim, I love. Ti voliš, you love. On, ona, ono voli. He, she, it loves. Mi volimo, we love. Vi volite, you love. And oni vole, they love. Piti, to drink. Ja pijem, I drink. Ti piješ, you drink. On, ona, ono pije. He, she, it drinks. Mi pijemo, we drink. Vi pijete, you drink. And oni piju, they drink. Jesti, to eat. Ja jedem, I eat. Ti jedeš, you eat. On, ona, ono jede. He, she, it eats. Mi jedemo, we eat. Vi jedete, you eat. And oni jedu, they eat. Okay, step four. Now it's just growing your vocabulary. And words, words, words. That's gonna be the biggest part about being able to speak conversationally. It's just knowing enough vocabulary to talk about everything you want to talk about. Um, and also to understand what other people are talking about around you. I'm gonna share with you just a few ways that I increase my vocabulary. Um, one of them was through an app called Memrise. So Memrise is a great app. I used it quite a lot in the beginning, 
Um, I don't really use it anymore, but I used it definitely when I was starting out. It kind of uses the analogy of growing a garden, and so when you plant seeds, you have to water them and nurture them in order for them to grow. It kind of relates that to growing your vocabulary. When you plant a word in your brain, then you have to keep coming back to it and nurturing it by repeating it um, again and again at certain intervals that they have worked out in the app. And so they'll remind you to repeat certain words when they feel that it's the best time to do that for your development, I guess. Um, it's a very clever app and I highly suggest it. It's also really motivating because you see how your garden of words are growing um, and you can just see how far you're progressing. The next way I learned more vocabulary is through children's books. And children's books are a great, great resource because they usually use simple vocabulary. Um, you usually will know the plot of a lot of these books, so it's kind of easy to work out any words that you don't know as you're reading the story. Also, they mostly have pictures, and so you can look and kind of get a sense of what the text is saying when you look at the pictures. Another way to increase your vocabulary is watching Croatian shows with English subtitles or watching English shows with Croatian subtitles. So if that's possible for you um, to do where you live, that's a great way really because then you're hearing it and you're seeing it. So you're kind of connecting the two as you watch. I obviously live in Croatia, but they play a lot of English shows and movies on TV but they always have it subtitled in creation. So I'm hearing what they're saying, but I'm also reading the text and I'm connecting the two. So it's really, really helpful um, in picking up new words and kind of just practicing your vocabulary that way. Okay, my last tip for increasing your vocabulary is to get a little phrase book, like an English creation phrase book. But they're great because in the back, they usually have a little dictionary. And it's a very concise dictionary with the most commonly used words. So it kind of just gives you a really nice reference of basic words that you can learn. Um, I remember when I first moved here, I would sit at a cafe and just go through the dictionary in the back. I would kind of just tick off the words as I went through um, and I felt that I had learned that word, I would put a tick next to it. Um, and then I would just kind of keep putting ticks on new words and new words until I went through the dictionary in the back. That was obviously when I was younger and I had the time to do that. I'm sure many of you don't have time to sit down and go through a dictionary, but that was what I did. So I guess that was kind of the starting point of building my vocabulary, just learning those basic words. And then from there, it just kind of triggers the growth of other words because some are quite similar. It just gets easier. The more words you know, the easier it becomes to learn other words. So just start with the basics and your vocabulary will start to even grow kind of more naturally as you progress. You'll also start to hear those words that you've learned in action. So if you're watching TV, um, you might hear some of those words being used and it's a really good reinforcement. Or if you're in a situation where you're hearing people talk around you and you can pick up some of what they're saying, that's also just a great way to reinforce you know, what you've learned. When you get to the point where you can kind of understand the gist of a conversation, that is an amazing moment. I remember kind of when that happened to me, it was just really motivating to know that, okay, it's working and I'm starting to understand. Okay, step five is start practicing everything you've learned by stringing words together um, and trying to make sentences. Um, they are not going to be grammatically correct and that's okay. They shouldn't be just start going and start practicing and start putting words together um, however you can. I used to do this a lot by going online and finding short children's stories in English and then I would sit down and translate them into creation. You know, writing it out, seeing it, uh, it just reinforces it in your brain again. It'll just kind of help you uh, start putting sentences together and then feeling more confident with being able to actually converse. And again, the point of that is not to make a perfect sentence and have it grammatically correct. It's just to start putting words together, putting one foot in front of the other, and just start to make sentences so you'll be able to make conversation. Also, don't forget to read your text out loud afterwards uh, so you can kind of get it in your ear. So eventually, you can also use this tool of writing short stories to work in your grammar. Eventually, not now, but when you get to that point when you're ready for it. Um, and I used to do that a lot just before bed. I would translate a story or two really short stories uh, and then after I would have even check it for any mistakes and I remember I used to get mad at him because the whole paper would be corrected and there would be mistakes everywhere um, and so he did what I asked him to do but I was just frustrated that the whole paper looked 
like it was all marked up and all in red. Last step. Uh, once you get to kind of a comfortable conversational level in creation, uh, then you can start to slowly, slowly uh, mix in the bigger grammar points like cases. Um, but do it one at a time. Really learn one rule, incorporate it into your speech and your, um, and your writing. So once you feel like you have a good grasp on one rule, then move to the next rule. Don't try to learn all of them at once. It'll be overwhelming. Uh, just do one at a time. There are just so many people that get so frustrated when they first start learning a language because all it is is grammar, grammar, grammar. Um, and it just gets so frustrating if you're not catching on right away every rule and you feel like you can't say everything properly and perfectly and that's what's expected. And so a lot of people see slow progress and they just simply give up. So don't do it that way. I know a lot of you are probably perfectionists and you would never dream about learning a language this way and that's totally fine. But for those of you like me uh, who wanted to just get to a conversational level, um, grammar can wait and you can address all the grammar after and you can be perfect at the grammar afterwards but just to get speaking to get comfortable start with the basics throw grammar out the window and learn a lot of vocab you will improve with time you will fix your mistakes with time but the best thing is when you can just start speaking to people you can understand people they can understand you you can really communicate and that is really i think the main point of learning language and it's a really good feeling when you get to that point okay so that's it that is my croatian language learning journey in a nutshell i hope you found a few helpful tips in here uh, or maybe you just satisfied your curiosity of how this strange foreigner learned creation. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and we hope to see you again really soon.